Sons, who is Johann Christian, so J.C. Bach, who took up residence in London and lived there, and he's the one who's known as the London Bach. J.C. Bach was a huge influence on Mozart, because when Mozart was a child and traveled through Europe, they made a trip to, he and his father and sister made a trip to London, and his father became ill, and they stayed there for an extended time for him to recover. And during that time, then eight-year-old Mozart um, had a lot of interaction with London Bach and um, picked up a lot of elements from his style. So J.C. Bach also was writing early symphonies and concertos. We'll also see the German composer Telemann, who is writing in this Galant style, this pre-classical style. style took on a type that was more ornamented, and we'll see this term rococo that emerges as a, a, a term that describes a shell-like natural um, motif in, um, in furniture. So, you know, if you've seen like, you know, the arm of a chair that has that kind of scroll design or the back of a, of a set <coughs> or something, which has this kind of design. Those are designs that are taken from, you know, the uh, shape of a shell, and so that's, that's what this term Rococo um, references. So I'll say this is more ornate, so there's a, a large uh, vocabulary of ornamentation that developed with the, the French Rococo style. And Jean-Philippe Rameau, that we talked about already, is an important theorist. Rameau then is a composer who is writing in this Rococo style. All right, so basically it's a lighter, it's more this idea of music as entertainment, something that is intended to be immediately accessible and that the composer is writing for the listener who's an average person who isn't necessarily an expert in music, and so they're trying to communicate on that level. All right, then, the other style that developed a little bit later is associated with another of Bach's sons. Before I talk about that, let's listen to uh, just a quick example of a little um, work that's in the Gallant style. This is actually written by a contemporary of Mozart, but you'll hear it's for harpsichord. And you'll hear it does have some contrasting thematic elements to it. And so that's something that's going to happen at, at this point, is that you start to have not that idea of just one theme. And you're going to hear Alberti bass patterns and just the, um, just the, the, the character, the atmosphere of this is something that's, that's not real serious. It's real light and play. This is by the composer Jim Arosa.
keyboard sonata by Chimarosa that's in the Gallant style. All right, so it's the second style that emerged in the 1740s. And this is in North Germany. Prussia it is the style that's associated with Bach's eldest surviving son, Carl Philip Emanuel, CPE Bach. <coughs> C.P.E. Bach is sometimes referred to as the father of the classical style. Is that important? And the style that he developed is the style that's described as Impensamer Stiel, the sensitive style. And you'll see just the term Impensamkeit, which re refers to the same thing. It's this, this, this style which placed an emphasis on on uh, unexpected elements, on contrast. <coughs> and so this is a dramatic element of this music, and this is something that became a basic part of the, the mature Viennese style. So what, what you'll see is, Unexpected harmonies or unexpected pauses, the use of silence. You'll also see that CPE Bach makes use of motivic thematic development. So those were techniques that he had learned from his father. And that's something that becomes just a basic element of Viennese classicism. All right, so this dramatic idea, we'll see the use of tremolos, and we're going to see this idea of you know, contrasting elements within a movement. And so this is something that's that's different in comparison <laughs> to the theory of affections the from the Baroque era. So we're going to listen to just a little bit of um, C.P. Bach's uh, pianoforte sonatas. This is one of the Prussian sonatas. And this is on an original instrument. And so it's kind of a halfway between the modern grand piano and <coughs> harpsichord. And so what you'll hear are these unexpected pauses. You'll actually hear there's a German six chord that will occur, which is a new harmony to the classical period. So I might just make a little note of that. Just augmented six chords arise at this point. And that's something for sure that Mozart and Beza picked up on. Thank you. 
the section. Expectations as far as the number of movements and the relative tempo markings, keys, and forms. So, just to review that, for a classical symphony, you expect how many movements? Four. Four. And first movement would be what you go? Fast. Form would be sonata allegro. Key would be time. Second movement would be slow movement, and it would be contrasting key. It would have forms like rondo or theme and variation, possibly sonata allegro. Third movement would be a minuet and trio. Then with Beethoven, we see the scherzo being used, and that's what we're going to see in the Beethoven string quartets is the use of scherzo movements instead of minuet and trio movements. But with Mozart and Haydn, we see minuet and trio. <coughs> with moderate tempo, that also is in time. And then a final movement that's fast and gives you know an unproblematic conclusion, a happy conclusion. And so this combination of instruments is something that is has a very clear uh, texture, and so that's something right there is that there's an emphasis on clarity.
and then ask the nature of a conversation among equals. So this, this genre becomes really popular, and we'll, we're going to look at one of the Haydn string quartets. Um, in total, Haydn wrote 83 string quartets. And so he developed the string quartet in the same way that he developed the classical symphony. Mozart important, um, Beethoven, Schubert. Um, in the 19th century, the string quartet becomes more of a conservative genre, and so you don't see Liszt or Wagner writing string quartets. Um, but what we're going to see in the 19th century is that composers will add the piano to the string quartet, and that creates a new genre that's called the piano quintet. So one thing that you might make a note of is on page 51 in your textbook to look at that listing of standard chamber ensembles. test, I will give you um, either a trio sonata or a duo sonata, like what we just heard with the Bach, or one of the standard chamber ensembles that's listed on page 51. So those are the different instrumentations that you can look for. So for instance, if you see a work that's written for violin, cello, 